Hello, ladies and gents, and welcome to this tutorial on manipulating diegetic music within an animated movie. Ooh, what does that mean? Well, it will come clear as I go. So basically for this, my students are working on replacing all day for a Batman Lego clip about a minute, and I'll put links to that and the music I'm using in the about this video section below so you can see what I've been using. Um, but essentially, I just want you to think for a start about the sound of music from within the world of a movie. So here we've got a disco going on in a bunker and as batman approaches he's going to hear things very differently as he approaches the outside of the bunker to inside and this is what i'm dealing with in today's tutorial so here i've got a premiere pro project and if you're working in premiere pro any other software like this you should really make sure that you've got a folder set up on the same drive as the software so you've got no lag you haven't got things going down usb cables and things like that so this is what i've got here and I'm going to bring the original MP4 into my project and the bit of music that I'm using. And I'm going to bring those onto the timeline. There we are. So I'm going to mute the original audio. I'm not going to delete it because I need it later. Uh, this is just going to have the music in it. You're not going to hear any of the dialogue or sound effects. It might sound a bit odd, but I'm going to be adding those in later. So I'm going to leave the original audio in so I can sync things properly. Uh, but for now, I'm just dealing with the music. That's plonked in. I'm also making good use of the audio track mixer in Premiere, which if it's not actually there by default, you need to find it in the Windows audio track mixer. I find it far more useful than the audio clip mixer. Uh, let's give that a blast, make sure we can all hear it OK. There we are. Good. Right. So as you'll see, there, a Batman was approaching a big metal door on the outside of the bunker. Now, he's not going to hear music as if it's playing full pelt like this all he's going to hear is a very muffled version and that's because the construct of walls and doors and things like that tends to stop the little tiny high frequencies coming through they get lost in that material whereas the bass frequencies a lot stronger come through that's why when you're next door to music it sounds muffled so to manipulate this i'm going to use in effects on the right hand side here i've gone into audio effects and I'm going to use the low pass filter. It does exactly what it says on the tin. It's very, very simple. It allows the low frequencies to pass through, i.e. it cuts the top frequencies off. Very simple uh, equalizing tool. So let's have a little look at this. If I go to effects controls, it is incredibly simple. Look, all you've got is bypass, so cut it all together. And your cutoff point, at what point in the audio spectrum between 20 hertz and 20,000 gigahertz, actually this goes higher, are you going to cut off the top end? At the moment, it's just cutting off a small amount of the, of the very top end of the audio spectrum. But humans can only hear up to 20,000 hertz and 20 kilohertz. If you're lucky, I can't. I'm deaf as a post. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use keyframing to manipulate how that bass, how the, sorry, how that treble comes in more as the door opens. So now it's applied. Let's have a little go. I'm going to bring this down to about 180 hertz, I think. And if we listen and watch now, the music is going to sound a bit more realistic because it's going to sound very muffled as Batman approaches the door. Let's, let's have a little look and hear. Okay, it sounds a bit more realistic. All right. But what I want is that Superman's open the door, then I want the music, the higher frequencies, to come through as that door opens. So I'm going to keyframe that. I'm going to roughly find the point here in the video where the door opens there's some around here and then zoom in to get really tight on it because it's going to go by frames at the moment right there's the door first moving somewhere around there and add a keyframe so simply click that little clock thing there and it adds what's called a keyframe this is an automation point you can use it for all sorts of things in premiere pro and other adobe softwares I'm now going to go through to the point where the door is fully open, which is around about there. Very, very close. It's very quick. There we are. And I'm going to add another keyframe. And I'm going to turn that up to, I don't know, around about 1300. So it's kind of a lot less muffled, but I still want that sense that it's coming down the corridor. So I don't want the full frequency range in just yet. Let's see if that works. Hopefully it has. There we are, okay. It's already sounding like it's in the room there. Uh, well, it's much closer to the music. You can hear much more of the music. So the last bit is for when the Batman is actually inside the room itself. So let's play on. Oh, 
walking in. And it's around here. As he, as he walks in, what I want is to lift up those last few frequencies. So from this scene here, there we go. I'm going to put in another keyframe. And I'm going to, to the point you raise in the room. Around there somewhere. Because I'm going to have another keyframe. And I'm going to lift it up to 20,000 hertz. So we've now got... So that's that bit dealt with. What happens when Batman walks in is that he's also working in a cavernous space. It's metallic, so you're going to get this kind of reverb. So I'm going to add some reverb to this, but not to the whole thing. You're not really going to hear the reverbs while he's outside. So let's go up to that first keyframe. OK, so at this point, Going to start hearing the reverb coming through as well so it's a similar position to that original keyframe so what i'm going to do is going to find one of the reverb options on here i'm going to use a convoluted reverb what i'll do this time to avoid me having to automate it i'm actually going to split the audio at that point it will maintain the original settings so all the original automation will still be there but i'm going to apply the convoluted reverb to that audio almost only and let's click on the edge to see what it looks like so what we've got here is the mix, so the balance of wet and dry. We've got the room size, we've got dampening. Basically, play around with these. You can even look at presets for the time being. Uh, but all of these things basically refer to how big and powerful strong reverb is going to be. I used this the other day, and the default settings seem to work just perfectly. But you've got all these presets you can use if you're not sure how to set up reverb. Uh, I'll do another tutorial on reverb at some point. But for now, let's just see what the preset sounds like. All right, so it's quite good, except for it's too much. It kind of works for that first section. So at this point onwards, I could look at keyframing it so it becomes drier, less reverb. Here you've got to go to individual parameters, and I'm going to look at shifting the mix parameter so it becomes drier. So here we are, I'm going to switch that on. Let's add a keyframe. And as he walks in, I'm going to reduce that to much lower than the mix. I'm going to experiment to see what it sounds like. I've not tried this before, so here we go. So somewhere around there, as he stops walking, maybe a bit earlier, I want that a little bit less mix. I'll just put that... Oh, I should have actually... So I put the keyframe in first and then set that. There we are. So... There we go. A bit more realistic. It's got that cavernous sound as well, so it's worked out perfectly. Okay, now obviously <laughs> the actual music stops dead here, as so I'm going to do the cut. You see where this fella sits down? That's kind of where the cut is, so it's roughly there. Let's cut that in there and delete that for now. It's non destructive, we'll just put it back later. So let's play this whole thing, let's see how realistic it is. So he's approaching. Okay, the door's opening. It's a little bit muffled. Now 
There we are. So that's where my record scratch will come in. Keep. And then we got the uh, all the dialogue to go in. Now, obviously, this audio is very strong at the moment, but I'll be using the audio track mixer later on. Let's just name the tracks. Audio. And music. And I'll just simply bring the level of the music down. I could actually automate that as well. So it gets louder as it walks in. But the filter's kind of giving that impression already. So yeah, that's it basically. You've got a demonstration there on how to manipulate EQ, filters and EQ there, to give that impression that you are moving closer and closer to a source of what we call diegetic music, music that comes from within the world of the movie. And in this case, going from the outside to the in, and then going into a cavernous metallic space, hence the reverb. So I hope you found that useful. Catch you soon.